Bond shops might be described a lot of different ways. Some people might say that it's a department store with a university community in mind. Um, but what it is in effect is a half a dozen different distinct departments, all of which are uh, operated differently. Many of them have their own manager. Uh, their focus is entirely different, like we're in the Rock and Crystal room now. And uh, the purchasing for that is almost all done once a year at the giant international rock and gem shows in Tucson. Uh, whereas the comic store, uh, 50 new releases come in every week. What was the whole concept behind the idea okay. when you started off? Well, we came to, my wife and I came here to Purdue for graduate school in 67. Okay. Uh, every, we were both heavy readers and literally everything we wanted to read we had to special order. Nothing was ever here in town. Okay. You know, she was in the English department, and people would hand her bibliographies and say, these would be good supplementary things to read, but you'll never find them here. At one point, then, we just said, you know, why don't we see if we can't order these things directly? Uh, and we went to a copy shop and had some stationery made and started uh, working with some of the things that we knew people wanted, just oriented around the English department to begin with started ordering a few books from uh, various publishers. Uh, after a short period of time, uh, we uh, had enough titles, we just made up a, a photocopied list and dropped a list of what books were available in everybody's in the English department's mailbox. Yeah. They might put an order back in her mailbox and she'd put the book in theirs and they'd put a check in hers and people said, you know, when can we uh, come browse? And so, we opened up on Saturdays and things kept going from When there. did you start diversifying your establishment, you know? Uh, within the very first year, we added some other things. We uh, added uh, a table full of LPs. And we added, there was a spinner of cards that were art reproductions in the front and blank inside. We're constantly uh, evolving. Some things that we carried in the past are gone. Uh, when the first Apple II computers were out, we were selling Apple II computers. Okay. Uh, when the uh, first uh, electronic calculator showed up, uh, which was four functions and $295, uh, we joined uh, an association uh, just in order to be part of the test market in that because we thought calculators would be something that ought to be here on the engineering campus. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of those things have left as they uh, became common elsewhere and weren't needed anymore. When you started your business, did you have a business model that um, you used to plan everything out with? And do you remember what it looked like, kind of? Um, when we started, we broke all the rules, and there wasn't a set model. Uh, we saw a need, and my wife and I just said, let's go ahead and do something about this. Uh, and we began just with uh, books, and uh, it was operated out of the dining room of our apartment. Was there a particular person in your life that maybe inspired you to make bonds? Like, was anyone in your family an entrepreneur? My father was. He uh, was mainly just a sign painter, but he started his out life out painting pictures. He'd go on shipboard and back and forth between here and Europe and Africa and elsewhere uh, and paint seascapes and whatnot and earn his way, uh, ended up being just a commercial sign painter, but uh, seeing that someone can do your own business is probably something that subconsciously was there. Do you use any sort of media outlets to advertise your shop for people not on Purdue's campus? Uh, our business goes a lot beyond the university campus, and uh, over the course of our existence, we've used radio, television, billboards, direct mail, uh, obviously newspaper advertising. But uh, each of the things kind of has seen its peak and, and gone away. Uh, when we used radio, it was primarily when we were selling music and everybody wasn't just downloading things themselves directly. Uh, and the music and the radio went well together. There are some products that we have, like our bead selection is the largest stone bead selection in the United States. And people follow us uh, from at 
stop by from all over the country sometimes to sh shop in that area. Present day, uh, I suppose a lot of effort goes into things like Facebook where we're updating and taking pictures of uh, things that are coming in new and uh, a lot of people are starting to follow us that way whereas a lot of the traditional advertising methods have kind of uh, fallen away. This is the first year in Oh, probably 30 or 40 years that I haven't had a contract with the Purdue newspaper for uh, advertising because uh, it just didn't do what it used to do. Uh, back when we were in one room in our apartment and we placed a two column inch ad, we might uh, have 50 people respond to it. And, and so uh, now you can, I suspect, do a whole page and not get that kind of response. <laughs> Have you ever just thought about opening a second location anywhere else? A couple of times I tried to help someone else, not in the immediate area, a little farther away, do something similar. And I felt that I couldn't really supervise and, and keep track of things if it got very far away. Uh, and I feel, as it is, very split among all the different sub-areas of the store, that uh, it's more than I believe I could keep track of uh, shifting to another location. I don't think I'd ever try to sell the business because there's just too many different things and, and everyone works so differently and to, uh, to keep them all balanced and everything up in the air, uh, I, I'm not willing to think about doing more. Is there a particular quality that you think is necessary for young potential entrepreneurs like ourselves? Just drive and the desire to, uh, to accomplish. Uh, I don't recommend it to slackers. <laughs> Definitely. More than anything, uh, an interest and a drive, uh, whatever the field is, I think if, uh, well I wouldn't want to be doing it if it were only just a matter of finances. Uh, I think you need to find something that, that interests you beyond just uh, a paycheck or the, uh, the earnings at the end. Would you consider this um, your main hobby? Is it something that you really enjoy doing or do you have other interests as well? Um, Books, reading has always been my principal hobby, and uh, I have lots of other interests, and some of those are reflected throughout the store. Uh, my musical tastes don't run to uh, some of the current things. Uh, I'm stuck back in the 70s, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, throughout the store, uh, there's a lot of things. The last big book I read was a physical geology book because I was interested in some of the rocks and minerals and the stone material that we make the beads on. So yeah, my interests are often reflected in the store. And sometimes there are things that uh, are reflected of other people in the store. We got into carrying comics because one of our employees was very interested in them and we allowed him to develop it. Uh, the fashion department was developed entirely by my daughter. And, uh, I stay away from it. That's, that's her baby. If you had one piece of advice for someone starting a new business, what would it be? sure that uh, you're willing to devote the effort to this and earn less than minimum wage yourself if need be uh, for a long while. Be, do something that you enjoy. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow.